Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Silver Screen Shenanigans podcast, where we sit down, watch a movie, and give our own silly little takes. My name is Devin, and the question of the day is, your, what is your favorite baseball movie? And for me, it's easily got to be Sandlot, just because it's nostalgic. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's just a fun little story, and also at the same time, it's... It's, it's like goofy at the same time, but it's got a sweet little message at the end. And for a smooth-brained individual like myself, I can enjoy it. Uh, my name's Jacob. Uh, my favorite movie is Caught Between Two, League of Their Own, and Major League, just because they're two very separate movies. One's a comedy, one's more serious. I love Tom Hanks and uh, League of Their Own. I love just the comedy part of uh, Major League itself. So. Hi, I'm Riley. Uh, I haven't really watched a whole lot of baseball movies, so I'd say my favorite's probably Bench Warmers. Just you know, because it's a it's a good silly one. One hundred percent counts. <laughs> um, I'm Emma, and my favorite baseball movie is probably Moneyball because Ooh. it really tells you about the background of baseball and kind of behind the scenes as well. Um, it's very, very interesting too, just to kind of learn. Yeah. I never thought I would like a movie about sports analytics, but I like, yeah, I love Moneyball too. Yeah. They do it very, very well. Um, connecting that to the movie we're showing or talking about today is 42, which, uh, it's a sports drama that stars Chadwick Boseman and Harrison Ford, uh, which is the story of Jackie Robinson. Um, kind of in his life after um, college and the war, which it's basically just kind of the story of him rising through the ranks and being able to play for the Dodgers. And, yeah, just kind of jumping into it real quick, it, it, it kind of starts off at sort of, I guess, the middle or sort of end of Jackie's kind of experience because um, his early life, and, you know, his service in World War II and his early um, baseball playing at, like, UCLA and whatnot is kind of glossed over, which is understandable. It's only a two-hour movie. You can't pack all of that in the beginning. They do mention it. Yeah. At the beginning, they talk about, well, they had these, all, all the people went out to World War One or whatever, and it's like, so they do mention it a little bit, but they don't really go in depth like they should. Right. I think there's like one line where they talk about, we went over there to fight fascism, and yet here, not everybody is free either. Um, yeah. Um, uh, and then they talk about a little bit of when he was court-martialed over there at Fort Riley, which is pretty cool. Um, they talk about, he didn't want to. He didn't want to sit at like the the back of yeah, the he service didn't bus. Sit on the back of the bus, uh, which was, you know, it's understandable why he didn't. He didn't want to, but he was court martialed, and and afterwards, every everybody looked at him, like, oh, you have a court martial. Well, what did you do? And then they looked at what he did, and they're like, oh, well, that's understandable. <laughs> um, that's one of like the sole reasons why they picked him, correct? Yeah, because he he's he's tough. He he when they were looking through, uh, yeah, when they're looking through players, they did they wanted to have somebody that was tough and could take the heat. Um, because racism and segregation is very much alive in 1947. Um, and it's it's a it also sets in the story of uh this guy named Branch Rickey who was. Is he the GM for the Dodgers? I, I think he was the owner. Owner of the Dodgers. Dodgers. Yeah, he was the owner. Because he was talking with other yeah. owners. And he is obviously wanting to win some championships, and he's looking to recruit. And also at the same time, he's looking to sort of make a statement um, to change baseball um, on and you know, as far as we know it. And he wants to pick an individual that's uh, going to help him change baseball. Um, and that's how we land, and that's how Branch, uh, finds Jackie Robinson. Uh. Well, he also picks him because he's of his religion. Right. It's like, well, he's a... He's a Methodist, I'm a Methodist. <laughs> uh. 
that was, that was pretty funny. I thought that was kind of yeah. that was kind of that's pretty and good. Harrison Ford and Chadwick Boseman do an incredible job in this movie. Uh, Harrison Ford perfectly like sums up like that that grouchy like voice coach of the like the forties and fifties. And later we'll hear a lot of people like say things that are from that time, which are hilarious. Oh yeah, not the bad stuff. No, of <laughs> not, course, not the, we're not going to talk. Yeah, about that's that, that not that funny stuff. I mean, that <laughs> stuff's in a lot of this movie. Oh yeah, and. Um, uh, which yeah. I you, you people would obviously I have a problem with it, but if you don't have some of the language that comes up later in the movie, you then it's not the well time. Context. It's not the time period. Yeah. Um, and still, they sugarcoated it like oh, crazy. Yeah. Like yeah. absolutely, the stuff um, that he heard while he was out on the field was so much worse than what they showed in the movie. Oh yeah, unrepeatable for sure. Yes. Then. So as, like, Branch Rickey's, like, shuffling through the papers and, like, looking for people to recruit, he kind of goes into this speech about, uh, you know, how he loves baseball. And he was like, you know, I love a good scoreboard because the scoreboard doesn't discriminate. It doesn't look at your race, religion, or uh, I get just, like, sex or whatever. It's, it only sees numbers. It only sees what you produce, and that's fair. But um, the scoreboard says that, but who controls the scoreboard is kind of the officials or the right. umpires and they are not a fan of Jackie. So they screw him over a lot, a, a lot. lot. Yeah. So, um, and where he first finds Jackie is, uh, something that I thought was a nice touch. They find him in the Negro league, which was separate from the MLB. Um, uh, you know, cause unfortunately segregation, yeah. they had to play their own league. Um, well, we come across them as they're, doing a, a game yeah and Jackie's talking mad crap in the middle of the game at the at the catcher yeah playing for the Kansas City Monarchs yeah um yeah and which is not a unfortunately not a team anymore it and it's it's uh it's possibly we don't even have I don't think Kansas City even has the uh their minor league team isn't there anymore either it's the uh Dang, who did we go? T Bones? Yeah, it's the T Bones now. It was the T Bones. Well, I don't think the T Bones are there anymore. Oh, they're not. Oh, really? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just the Royals. Oh, huh. I feel like the Royals still have the rights to the name, though. Right. Every now and then they'll play in the Monarch jersey, um, which is cool. Yeah. Um, but he's he's talking mad crap just the entire time at the game, and it gives us a good sense, I think, of, of who he is. Yeah. He doesn't put up with anything and he's good at baseball very good at baseball you said that his his brothers or something said that that was his worst sport i could i could be wrong but i thought when i read his autobiography his brother said that baseball was jackie's worst sport um <laughs> and he's really good at baseball <laughs> that's, so that's impressive. kansas city this set google set according to google um, and the internet never lies right <laughs> So, Kansas City Monarchs is now the team. They were formerly known as the Kansas City T-Bones, oh. but now they're oh. back to the Monarchs. Oh, they changed the name. Oh, okay. that's, that's nice. really cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the leagues were separate, and Branch Rickey finds uh, Jack, and he's like, that's my guy. That's who I want. Because um, he knows that he, he is thick-skinned enough. Well, he knows he has the well, fight. He, he in has him. to get a really good player first. Yeah. Somebody, and he also had, yeah, like you said, he has to have he has to have the fight in him to keep going when mm -hmm. people say things to him, and, and he chose the right guy. So, Micker, Mister Ricky, took a chance on Jackie Robinson and the Dodgers, which started something bigger than either of them, either one of themselves. Like this is not only going to change baseball, but this is going to change America. Well, I think America had been starting to desegregate some of it, but baseball was like the last frontier. Because I'm, oh, switch it around. Switch that around. Whoops. Yeah, no. Baseball is. You often see like um, with like laws changing and stuff. It doesn't start at like Congress or right. the government. It starts with the people. It starts with the culture. Yeah, this was the beginning. Was okay. baseball? Um, I got those backwards in my head. Then. Oops. Yeah. No, it's good. Um, but this, uh, and this is in the, yeah, 1947-ish. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, 
you know, a good while before the civil rights movement begins. So this is kind of, I guess, the spark that kind of lights the fire. Um, so he he gets accepted, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, they meet him on the road, and he's at that gas station. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. So our first full, like, experience of him not giving in to the racist ideologies that people have is they're on the road, and they're filling up their bus. The Kansas City Monarchs are filling up their bus at this gas station, and Jackie needs to use a restroom. Mm. But the only restroom is a whites-only restroom. And he goes, all right, pull the gas out. Get out. We're, we're leaving. We'll get our 100 gallons of gas somewhere else. And the guy goes, that's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the guy, he's like, all right, go quick. And so he gets, he gets to use the restroom in a whites-only, which is unacceptable. Oh yeah, like. But I think that it, people had. Oh, yeah. That, it's just so weird to think about that in our day and age. Oh yeah, no, twenty twenty one. That's it's a thing within history when you like you can't look back on history with the lens through the lens of twenty twenty one because yeah. it's gonna everything's gonna be ugly. Um, but I think it shows that Jackie's smart too. He's not. He's like, I'm gonna play this guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the bathroom and I'm gonna get this gas. <laughs> Which that also um, kind of opens the gate to his character. So as he's being, I mean, one thing that the man or the owner mentioned is you can't fight back. That's one thing that you can't. Like your mm-hmm. character is what's gonna kill you because you cannot fight back. And he want he is the type of guy who fights back. Yeah. When Ricky first calls Jack into the meeting, um, I think a lot of people mistake this scene because I've seen it like on. TikTok and YouTube and stuff, they take this scene out of context where um, Branch Ricky says, you know, like, you know, a black man and a white man's game. I think they take it out of t- context because what Branch Ricky's trying to do is test Jackie in that scenario. He's just wanting to see how he reacts to what he's saying to him. And then a little bit later, he says, I want you. I want a player. He's like, I think Jack says, so you want a player that doesn't want to fight back he's like no i want a player that has the guts not to fight back um so i think it's people look at that scene and say oh look how racist this movie is and i'm like no this is a branch is testing jack and he's seeing if he's the right guy and branch sees that he is and he's like perfect let's work together it's real. it's very very cool oh yeah and yeah and branch the through the entire the entire time he is always on um, Jackie's side. He is. He says, "I'm here to make money." Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. the best way to get money is to get lots of people in the stands. And yeah, speaking of that, another person that was with him the entire time is his wife, Rachel yes. Robinson. Um, and Who, that's oh, she yeah. had some money. She 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 was oh, very yeah. wealthy. Um, she I think it said yeah she was a nurse and she got to go to UCLA too with Jack. So yeah, she w- I think she was. She's doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was also with Jack the entire time, too. The only wife that was allowed to go with. To, pr- to spring with, training. Yeah. Um, because he would need it. Yeah, he's going to need it. Because she's kind of, I think, his rock in this movie. Um, yeah, definitely. One other person that's with him the whole time is the writer. Oh, the yeah. Journalist. The journalist. Which I can't remember his name. I think I feel like it's Ed... Or is that, or that was another person's name, another teammate's name. That's the boys. That's the little boys. The little yeah, the boys. little boys. And it, bad. I th- yeah, there's a cool line where he talks to Jackie. He says, you're not the only one in this fight. You know, and he's like, you know why I'm, you know, right behind home plate riding? Is well, he's, the- he's on the third baseline. All right, he's, yeah. He's not even close to behind the plate. He's like, because they don't allow. With my typewriter on my lap, I'm on the third baseline. Do you know why that is? Because they don't like, they don't allow people like me up in the. The press box. Press box, yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, which really opens people's eyes. It opens my eyes, anyway, to that's how it was. Mm -hmm. They weren't allowed anywhere with the others, and that was just crazy to think. No, yeah, like you said, it's it's an alien world to us now um, that, you know, the places would allow for, like, for that to happen. Yeah. but yeah, so he's in, uh, he's in with the monarchs right now, or no, the uh, 
what was the Montreal. other team? Montreal. Montreal. Yeah. So he's with starts out with Montreal, kind of sort of kind of tries out for the team, but like they kind of already know that he's good, and they kind of already know that he's gonna play well. Yeah. Um. So he obviously gets on that team. Um. But shortly after, like the first game, and he's staying in somebody's house. You know, this white man comes up and he's like, "You better watch out! Like we're all coming." Yeah. And he's like, "I'm not the only one. I'm the first. Yeah. Or something. He's like, "Is he in there? Is that boy in there?" Mm-hmm. And that that was after just like the first game, I think. I think it was the first game, first or second. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So then he calls up the or the journalist calls up the owner and he's like, "Hey." Like they're threatening us, we gotta go. And so he's, he's yeah, like, Brant. "Don't don't tell Jackie why we're leaving. Just get him out of there." <laughs> and Branch is like, "Yeah, yeah, get him out of there now." Right. And as the, yeah, they're driving away. That part's funny. Jackie gets his, he's so upset the entire time. Well, and yeah, well, and then when uh, some some guys noticed that Jackie was in the car, they started walking towards it, mm. and the journalist sped out and like went around the car in front of him. And Jackie goes, "What are you doing?" And then he explains everything, and then Jackie starts laughing because he thought that he got fired. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, I thought I thought you were going to so cut me from the team. He was so upset because he thought that he had been fired to begin, like just already. I mean, in reality, they were trying to keep him safe, so he was laughing. And, and then it cool. doesn't doesn't take long, and they're like, okay, yeah, Jackie, he's good. He can play in the Dodgers. Um, but like Branch said, they needed everybody at the helm of this thing, and they needed the coach like the head coach of the Dodgers is involved in a scandal and the it's like he's uh I think what is branch calls him he's like he calls him up and he's like adultery is also in the bible <laughs> um so he's uh, he's suspended for a year which well, is the not na- great the National Baseball League head guy yeah called branch branch yeah thank you he called branch and he's like hey listen this is not looking great. Yeah. We got lots of sponsors and they just saw this and it's not good. You got to suspend them. So now they don't have a coach. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about this one coach though is they really needed this one coach. Someone has thick skin. Yeah. He does what he's told. He will get the job done and they get, it gets fired because I feel like this is a way to inadvertently stop Jackie from being on the team. Right. Yeah. Cause he actually straightened out the team when they started a petition Right, not yeah. to play with Jack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. lots of people on the team signed a petition that they're like, "I will not play if Jackie Robinson is on our team." Mm-hmm. And he he wakes him up like two in the morning to straighten him out. <laughs> yeah, but I like another thing. I don't know if it's a real thing or the movie's just trying to be have a little comedy here. Branch didn't call the coach until like one in the morning <laughs> every time, and it got to like he called him so much. He laid with the phone on his stomach before he went to bed. What's it, he says, like, are you awake? And he's like, we're the only two people awake. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I think he probably called them around the same time, and they were in somewhere else. Yeah. So For Branch, it was, like, maybe in the morning or something. And for that guy, it was... Like um, 3 a.m. Because they were in Panama? Yeah. Right. yeah. At one yeah. point, they were in Panama. Right. Yeah, um, he was up in the Swiss Alps. He was, yeah. he was snowshoeing when he first called them about the adultery thing. Yeah. Well, but yeah, with, the, with that as one of his points. Mm-hmm. So through that, they get a different coach, which the poor guy was retired. <laughs> he was done with baseball, and then they he branch ropes him back in. Um, does that coach do anything? Like, there's. Yeah. I think the next well, part they go to the hotel, part of and that then they don't. Speech. They don't accept the hotel. Yeah. They don't accept the whole team at the hotel, not just Jackie. They don't want the whole team at the hotel. Well, that's past. Some stuff, like that's that's after his first game, his first few games with. Yeah, him. that's a while. So before that, he gets onto the Dodgers team. He's onto the Dodgers team. He's playing with everybody else. He's playing in MLB big leagues, um, and he, he every every pitcher, every team that goes against him is constantly, constantly going after him. Either trying to hit them with hit him with the ball, calling him names in the crowd or in the on the bench. Um, these teams don't want to play. They and like one of the coaches said, um, he said they came to kill. They didn't come to play. Yeah, the other team. So, so yeah, a few games on the road. Obviously, uh, they're traveling, um, and just I mean, one of the biggest events probably that happened is, and I don't know if we're missing the stuff, but when the Phillies coach uh, is well, just, I think it was the Phillies manager, well, right? 
Well, same, same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Um, Philly's manager or coach is calling him the N word over and over again. Not like not saying anything else, He's just, just saying that. He's at just it. chirping it. Yeah, as Jackie's up to bat. Obviously, th- I mean, up until now, Jackie has had a great run. He's hit lots of balls. He's got on base. He's stolen tons of bases already. But for some reason, this game just gets in his head. Well, because of this coach. Um, I think it's also his teammates aren't his teammates don't really fully do comfortable with him yet. Right, right. None of them are sticking up for him or anything. Mm-hmm. They, they, so they're he, trying to realize that this isn't right. Yeah, they're like, they're not, co- yeah, and then they see this guy yelling at him. They're like, oh, yeah, no, this this ain't good. Mm-hmm. Right. So that this is this really opens their eyes to he's he's a baseball player. We're all here to play the game that we love. Yeah, let's just play and the game. Is it, please. Is it, it's Pee Wee. Pee Wee stands up. Yeah, it's Pee Wee. Yeah, he stands up and he, he stands up for Jackie. Yeah, you know, he, he's like, "You don't shut up, I'll shut up. I'll shut you up." <laughs> like, I was it Stinky? I, I think one, it was Pee Wee. One of the two. It, was, it, was no, it wasn't. It wasn't Pee Wee. was Stinky for sure. Stanky. Stanky. Stanky, stanky arm. Because Pee Wee's the <laughs> the shortstop guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. That yeah. talks to him. And but then, the, like the last line, as they're walking away from each other, I think the guy says, "How does it feel being an N-word lover?" And then <laughs> Pee Wee goes, "I don't know. How does it be feel being a redneck piece of <laughs> crap?" <laughs> and I get the point of him standing up. But I feel like it's also because he started attacking him as well. Yeah. About his wife. Right. So I feel like he was trying to do a good thing, but also I feel like he's trying to defend himself. Yeah. Yeah. So Jackie hits two pop flies, outs immediately, doesn't get on base, and then he just he just goes ballistic. I he, mean, he just he breaks, breaks down. down, but not in front of the crowd. That's the right. thing is he's following what the owner he, said. He doesn't break down in front of people. He keeps his cool. I, it's close. He like almost. very he, close. He turns. Yes. He says something, and then Jackie turns around with the bat, and he's like rubbing it in, in his hands, and he's like just and, silent. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, the, the amount of strength that it takes to hold back it. It's I probably it I could I couldn't do it. Yeah, so he he then walks down down in through the dugout with the bat in his hands and then bashes it against the wall mm-hmm. in the corridor where nobody else could see him. It was just him bashing the, the bat against the wall, breaking it into millions of pieces. And then obviously Branch is there at the game and he can see Jackie's like super frustrated, so he goes and meets him and then we so play this scene. Audio scene for you. No. The next white son of a bitch that opens his mouth, I'll smash his goddamn teeth in. You can't do that, Jack. I'm supposed to just let this go on. These men have to live with themselves. I have to live with myself, too. Right now, I'm living a sermon out there. You don't matter now, Jack. You're in this thing. You don't have a right to pull out from the backing of people that believe in you, that respect you, that need you. If you fight, they won't say that Chapman forced you to. They'll say that you're in over your head, that you don't belong here. Do you know what it's like having somebody do this to you? No. No. You do. You're the one living the sermon in the wilderness. Forty days, all of it. Only you. I got a damn thing I can do about it. Of course there is. You can get out there and hit. You can get on base and, and score. You can win this game for us. We need you. Everybody needs you. You're medicine, Jack. So yeah, it kind of cut off there at the end, but he says that you're medicine, Jack, which is perfect. He's a medicine for the sickness that is racism and segregation. Um, and I guess listening to that, though, there's two things that I sort of caught uh, where he, he talks about because you know there's that little religious aspect where they t- where they're talking to each other. Um, he says like you're in the jungle, you're in the forty days, which 
it's true. It's 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 similar to the trials that are like in the Bible. Um, Jack is also going through a trial himself, um, and He's also being tested. yeah, very much so. And then the other thing I kind of got was when he talks about like you yourself don't matter anymore, Jack. Um, you can't give up on it. It's the people that are around you now. You can't give up on them. And it's true. Like It's like at this point you have uh, people calling him a hero. You have people, which in a way he very much is. Um, but like he says, he can't, can't give up now because he has people rooting for him and he has he's in this fight now and he can't give up i don't know if it's uh in later in this scene or if it's later in the movie but branch says that there was a there's a little white boy that he saw playing yeah. baseball who was pretending to be jackie robertson he was wiping his hands in the dirt rubbing them together and then holding his arms way out with the bat yeah. like jackie does it's a uh he's he's, he's slowly ending it yeah um it's it's a message that is um, beyond color, which is uh, even before you know that I have a dream speech. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the next thing, this sort of goes down. Um, oh, one thing I kind of wanted to add real quick was when he went and played for the Dodgers, he had already been to war, um, and also he had gone to UCLA, um, mm-hmm. four year college, so. Jackie was probably more experienced and very like more educated than most of the people that he was playing with. Yeah, and they kind of mentioned they very nonchalantly mentioned those things. Like, I wish they would have um, done a little bit more of a background in the movie of him. But you know, there'll be like a few lines here where they'll say, "Well, he knows how to play with white boys." He's from UCLA, and yeah. uh, at one point, I think he's like, "I mean, when I was in the war, I." with white boys something like that yeah but they just very very nonchalantly put those in um and then i think where he after he like he smashes the bat and he comes back out into the crowd i think the movie does a good job of like showing the magnitude of what's going on here because he's got like a whole crowd of people basically that hate him and like some of them that want to kill him and he's going out there and he's playing anyway mm-hmm. Well, at the end of at the end of this game, uh, Branch really says it best. He goes, "The guy who the the manager who was saying the very awful things to Jackie, where everybody could hear him, was really creating sympathy. Mm. People were sick of hearing him say that stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's okay when they said a little bit at him, but he just kept pounding it into right, him. right. It just got so and he was annoying. just trying to play baseball." Right. Yeah. All he was trying to do was do what everybody else was doing. And I so can't it really remember. opened up sympathy for him, which is what Branch said, which I really hit yeah. core to me. I can't. Re- is it the next game where him and Pee Wee are talking? It's like the very last one, yeah. Yeah, where they're talking about. Uh, he says something. He like leans his hand on. He like leans his arm onto him, and he's like, "Thank you, Jack. Um, I, f- I got family up there." Um, from, this this is showing him what uh, who I am from St. What Louis. kind of man? Yeah. What kind of man I am? And he's like, maybe, uh, maybe next time we can all wear forty two, and then they can't tell us apart. Which it, it's it's a fun line. Um, yeah, because well now the MLB does in April they everybody wears yeah. forty two. Um, but one thing that we forgot to mention is when he got drafted, drafted when he got traded to the uh, Dodgers. Did, was it traded? He just kind of like. He got accepted onto the Dodgers. Yeah, when yeah. he got onto the Dodgers, he had a kid at the same time. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, totally forgot to mention that. He had a little boy. Um, so his wife was pretty pretty busy with him during the season, um, but she still made it to, like, most of the games. Oh, and that's what, yeah, that's what also what I wanted to talk about was, yeah, Rachel Robinson, I just being in association, it, it shows just being in association with Jackie, unfortunately brought heat on her, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, with a kid as well, it... It was a struggle for her very much so. Yeah, um, just as Pee Wee Pee Wee came to to Branch and said, I got this death threat. Yeah. I need you need to take me off the team or do something about Jackie. Oh, yeah. Because it, it, in the in the letter it called him like an inward lover or whatever. Yeah. And Branch walks over to a filing cabinet and pulls out three big like 
almost not briefcases, like the but like folders, big, vanilla, Manila yeah. folders, vanilla. full of death threats. And yeah. he goes, "These are to Jackie, and I can guarantee you these are worse than what you got." Oh yeah, because it was like he called him like a carpet seller or something carpet like that, bagger. a carpet bagger, and like don't know they're anything about af- baseball. They're coming after your kid. Yeah, or it's yeah, and it's nasty. To stuff. Jackie, they were like, "I'll kill your child. Your wife is dead." Stop mm. playing baseball or I will kill you and all of your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he played anyway. Played yeah. anyway. Well, also, Jackie, did Jackie ever even see those? Yeah. He did? He said, he said that he'd, he, Jackie had seen them. Oh, he had. Okay. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure of that part. And I feel like this is kind of like a reoccurring theme is everybody doesn't side with Jackie or doesn't understand what he's going through. mm until they witness it themselves, or it starts coming onto them, mm-hmm. like you said, like you said, Riley, sympathy. Yeah. Um, it was what is branch? You say it's like a Greek word. It's like to suffer. Mm-hmm. Um, to suffer yeah. with. Yeah, and like you said, they. Um, and I think Rachel says it in the movie some at some point too, where it's like, if only they knew you, if only they knew what you're going through, then they, I guarantee, they wouldn't say these things to you. Yeah, that was after he got beamed by that pitch. Yeah. On that bus. That's something else I want to talk about real quick is in some of these games, and obviously they in like the hurt the very nasty things that it's said to Jackie, obviously in a two hour movie you can only show like a couple of games. This was going on for years and years and years where people would yell nasty things at Jackie. They would try to hurt him and they do. They hit him in the head with a baseball. They when he's running on when he's running to first. No. They, no, when he's on well, first he's, and somebody's running, the first they cleated him. And he has his foot on the bag, and, yeah, somebody just cleats him. Oh, the Achilles. Yeah. Well, I think they, they hit his calf, yeah, luckily. He, if yeah. they got his Achilles, he would be done for. Well, oh. it kind of looked like he stepped on his Achilles, I but it, I think I he pulled yeah. his calf or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and but it's the amount of pressure that's on Jackie to keep fighting and also the amount of strength that it took for him to keep fighting for years and years and years – uh, it, he's a real life superhero. Like that, it's it's the I think it, it's just insane. Like the amount of willpower that he had to have to go through all of that stuff. Well, the the th- the thick skin that he had to have to have oh, all yeah. those people say such horrible things to him and keep going. And Do I you, think it also shows the strength in not fighting opposed to fighting. Do you guys want to move into the scene after he gets cleated when he's getting stitched up? Oh yeah, all the reporters. Branch. Oh right, and then Branch has I, I, Harrison Ford in this movie is so good. <laughs> so all these reporters are asking him. They're like, "Well, how, what happened? Did you did he get cleated?" And they're like, "How'd you get cleated?" And he's like, "Well, he stepped on me while I was <laughs> guarding the base." And he's like, "Well, he there was plenty of room on the other side. He could have just touched the bay at bag. He wasn't going to turn." So. Are you, like, are, well, you are, calling, you, are you are you calling the other him, player a liar? Are you calling him a liar? And then Is he Bran- lying? Branch comes get out of here right now. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think Branch saved him right there because oh, he was going to yeah. be like, "Of course he's lying." I mean, I'm, I'm the one bleeding here. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and then he sits down with Jackie and he has another cool little speech with him where he talks about and Jackie asked him straight up. He was like, "Why are you doing this?" And he's like, "Well, you know, we fought." fascism over there so we want to have it and he's like no why are you doing this why are you doing this with me and he's like well baseball honestly has been a game that i loved for my entire life and i've always felt like i could do more and i haven't and i don't want to see this game ruined so that's why i'm doing this with you and it's a good little sentimental moment which is uh, very believable because branch ricky and jackie robinson in real life did have a very close relationship um and also, Branch was kind of, in a way, in the civil rights fight way before he fought, or way before he met Jackie. Um, and this was kind of the way to, I guess, get it going. He also mentioned in there that, like, he witnessed the same thing. Someone, yeah. for the love of the game, trying his best, but being put down and can't advance in the game he loves because of his skin color. Mm-hmm. He witnessed it and didn't do enough for that guy. Early on in his life. Yeah. And now this is his way of doing the right thing now when he knows he can Mm -hmm. and kind of putting it forward because he couldn't do it for the guy before. Yeah. And and there's a lot going on in this final game, but there's that kid who yells, uh, just the dad and this kid. The dad and this kid are talking and they're like, oh, I can't, I'm so excited to see blah, blah, blah play today. 
I, I really hope that he can hit how many how many how many home runs do you think he's gonna hit today? And the dad's like, Oh, I, I don't know, son. And then Jackie walks out on the field. Yeah. Everybody starts booing. Yeah. The dad starts yelling the N word at him. And then the kid is like confused for a second. And he's like, Oh, this is what we're supposed to do at this baseball uh, yeah. game. And then, so he's, then the yeah. kid starts yelling the N word too. And I think that's kind of a little bit of a microcosm of how racism was so fueled in America in that time where it wasn't, it, you weren't born with it, but you were definitely taught it. Um, yeah. And, well, this is when Pee Wee comes over and right. gets his arm. I, I thought, I thought of this, uh, Pee Wee has some pretty, pretty racy lines here. Oh he yeah. Goes, <laughs> if, if only we had a couple more bullets, we could have fought you guys off in the, in the South. <laughs> like, Jackie right? goes better than like next time. <laughs> Yeah. Said better and luck next time, I guess. There isn't going to be a next time because of what's happening here, um, yeah. which is so cool. That was a very, very heartwarming moment. Um, he's like, I, I, w- I am from the South, but I'm here with you now, Jack. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, a, it's a message that goes beyond skin color, which is, it's, it's pretty cool. It's always a great message. Because, um, I mean, yeah, Jackie qu- was quite literally – the he changed the world in a way he started this thing um which then moved on to uh, the civil rights movement which moved on to legislation to desegregate schools and you know and that stuff that would happen there and it all i think in a way it all starts uh, i mean well it, it obviously starts further back in history but i think the change to for betterment starts with jackie i had a little question with this scene because i don't exactly know how everything went down but remember how we were mentioning earlier, put 42 on all of this. Mm. Did they do that because of that quote itself? Like what today where they retired all of oh. 42 numbers? No. And well, I don't think the all of 42 is because of that. Probably like them, everybody wearing 42. That's what we're talking about, wearing 42. In April could be. But, but it's not because of that quote. They're like, they're not like oh that that quote he said that so we're going to do that it was it's more because of how much of an impact Jackie had on the civil rights movement and in baseball. baseball yeah and, and you know you kind of have to take a grain of salt when you watch a movie like kind of a biopic about somebody like how many of the lines were kind of made up and how yeah. many of the lines were actually true um, cuz you can you can create some really inspiring quotes after the fact yeah and, and, you know, <laughs> you just make things up. You yeah. can just make really things can. up. Yeah. I, but speaking of that, though, yeah, 42 is the only number in the entirety of the MLB that is retired. Mm-hmm. Um, By every all team, teams. Every team has numbers that are retired, but for that, for that, for that team. specific team, yeah. Right. Every single team I has it. the number 42 retired for Jackie Robinson. Yeah. You might have just answered it. My question was. Out of all the forty twos, are they all? Do they all say Jackie Robinson, or like what name do they have with that? Jersey? Oh, like on the back of the jerseys. Yeah, yeah. when they it's wear them. It's all now. because of Jackie Robinson. Do, but do they all no, say? I think Jackie? he means the reason. Like, like, uh, so baseball teams when they have when they retire a number, it's because of a player. Yes. Yeah. So he meant does every single team's forty two say Robinson? Right. Oh. Or, or, or only the ones he played for? That's I what I'm trying to see. I don't know if they have the name on it. They might just have the forty two. Th- yeah, Dodgers it, for sure. Yeah. yeah, have it, and the possibly the Giants because he was very, very. Giants. Yeah, he was very, very. I don't know how to explain this. Um, for a very, very short period of time, he went with the Giants. Very, very short, but, um, yeah, all the teams have. Have that retired. Cool. Also, another question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, why did they pick that one day? Like, what's this, the significance behind that one day? Jackie Robinson Day or yeah, what? The, where they were all wear 42. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe it was a date where he, like, started to play for them or. Like the first day of baseball that he played or something. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'm just curious. Sir. It's pro- <laughs> probably some probably some significant event where he starts with the Dodgers. Um. The day you got hit in the head with a baseball. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's um, the anniversary of Robinson historic MLB debut as he broke ah. the baseball's color barrier on Friday, April 16th. But gotcha. it's on Thursday. Jackie Robinson Day is Thursday, April 15th, but he broke the color barrier on the 16th. So it's the day he joined. Yeah. yeah. Or I guess, it's, yeah, it's because he joined beforehand and then he actually played his first game on a different date, which, yeah. 
Um, but overall, yeah, I thought it was really solid. I probably have more of a bias towards it because I like history. Um, but overall, it was a it was a pretty solid biopic of uh, kind of the man that was Jackie Robinson. The amount of work that he put into not only his life uh, within baseball, but his life afterwards. Um, it's something that yeah, any anyone should aspire to. Um, but it's, I can't, for the most part, I mean, the dialogue at some points is kind of a little, uh, a little hokey, but it's, it's, if it's set during the time, I can understand because they, they had different, uh, wait, they didn't, different they had speech patterns and yeah, stuff. They had different words that they said in the forties than we do now. I like the, uh, the, the guy, the announcer's like, eh, see, there's a lot of baseball going on on the field. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, but for the most part, I don't have really that many complaints. So I would go with a, probably an eight out of 10. Yeah, it was, I liked it. Um, it was pretty good. The only thing that I wish they would have done is talk about the history of him more and, um, you know, how he became into the NFL or NFL. Oh my goodness. MLB. (laughs) Sorry. Um, (laughs) but yeah, I, I would say probably an eight out of ten for sure. Um, I don't know. This is my first time watching it, by the way. Um, what? Yeah, <laughs> I've okay. seen bits and pieces, Makes but I, I never actually sat down and watched it. Um, I'm gonna go with, I think an eight. Like it was a good movie. Mm-hmm. I I like movies about history as well, and I thought it showed it fairly accurately from what you've told me in the past when you've done papers on him and whatnot. So I don't know. I liked the movie. It was good. I uh I thought the movie was really well or it was really well put together. It really showed the story of Jackie Robinson, but because I don't know a whole lot of the history of Jackie Robinson, it could have just been all wrong. <laughs> and I still <laughs> for the for the most part it was pretty good. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Uh yeah, it was it was pretty good. Um I really enjoyed just the storyline and I didn't really enjoy the language, <laughs> but that's just a personal thing. Um, otherwise, I I'd give it like a like a seven and a half to an eight because it was it was pretty good. I give it a seven point seven five. Ooh. Nice, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, overall, a great movie, and really glad that segregation like that is not a thing now <laughs> in yes. America. Um, so nice. we've we've definitely made way. And we talked about this when we watched the movie, right? If any one of us was in the position of Jackie at any point in this movie, especially, oh, I, I would have failed. Oh, I would have failed instantly. Like the the endurance people had back in the day, just to get through the day of all this stuff that's been happening to him. Oh yeah, I don't think anybody, at least that I know of, oh, could go yeah. through that. I definitely would be beating, beating people with bats if yeah. I was in his position yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. But, but there's couldn't. there's so many good messages in this story, mm-hmm. and I think it's uh, definitely deserving of a watch. Not only if you love baseball, but just a really you know feel good story. It's just <laughs> interesting, yeah. And a very very important part is that it's he true, didn't crack. No. It's a true mm-hmm. historical story, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. But yeah, the a very very important part is that he didn't crack. He didn't fight back. He didn't yell because they knew. Anything that he did, it would be taken out of context. It would obviously be his fault, even if it wasn't, mm-hmm. which was very, very, very good of him. Mm-hmm. Can I be that guy and just say, like, what if? What right? if? Yeah, what if? Like, they had a stack of papers of guys, and literally Jackie was, like, on the bottom, oh. wasn't he? Yeah. I don't know. He what, was what, on the bottom because the others didn't want him there. Branch already had his file out. Yes. So Branch did? Branch yeah. had him in mind, for sure. So, like, what if they, they don't choose methods. Jackie? Yeah, like, do you think? We would have had the same outcome. So historically, it's possibly not because they talked about a lot. If Jackie failed, then the black community fails, and they mm-hmm. wouldn't get another shot for like at least ten years. So, well, I mean, one, the amount of pressure on Jackie's shoulders there is mm-hmm. insane. But it, I think it would have happened again. It's just it would have taken longer. Had to be the right guy, yeah, for sure. What if? Do you think, I don't know anybody that came after him, right? But, like, the next year or, like, closely a couple oh. years after, the three other guys joined, or two other, I can't mm-hmm. remember. Do you think they would have been able to do it? 
do they do they help the cause at all or no? Uh, I mean, they definitely part. helped, you know, to um, get more player, you know, to include everybody. And then, but if they could do it, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, <laughs> Hypothetical kind of in that. history. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What if, you know, I'm just trying to pick your brain, you know. Um, <laughs> but test, yeah. Test your historical knowledge. Ooh. Well, <laughs> let me get my paper real quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, it's, it's a definitely a great watch, especially if you love baseball. And uh, just, you know, where the good guy wins in the end. Um, it's a feel-good story. But we wanted to thank you guys for listening. And if you had any questions, recommendations, or concerns, email us at silverscreenpod. And thank you guys for listening. Peace. <laughs>